Great, good afternoon to you, and uh, welcome to our Wednesday relaunch again here. Nice to see you here, and very warm welcome to those of you who are joining us online today, wherever it is that you may happen to be. It's lovely to know that you're there as well, and uh, we're glad to welcome you here. Be lovely when you are able, if you are able ever to, to get into the building here, uh, lovely always to see you. We're open from half past 12 to 2 uh, every Wednesday, and uh, we're gradually moving to the point where um, there's, there's more in the way of catering. We're uh, bumped up a, a notch or two this week with um, rolls and sausages and uh, hot tea, hot coffee and that sort of thing. So uh, we will move on in that way. So uh, very welcome whenever you come. Lovely to have you here with us. Uh, Wednesday lunchtime, Wednesday relaunch. And today all that I really want to concentrate on is just one important theme. And that is the, the love 
um, that we are to have for the Lord. Uh, we're going to think about that. Over the month of September, we've simply stuck with one uh, passage of Scripture. It happens to be the, the last um, uh, part of the, the four accounts of the life and ministry of Jesus. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. Uh, John runs through the story of the ministry of Jesus and does that in 20 neat chapters. And then chapter 21 is a, is a kind of epilogue in which he records um, an event that happened after Jesus was raised from the dead when at the Sea of Galilee, um, his disciples, Peter um, and the other disciples, they'd gone out fishing because that's uh, basically what they did, uh, caught nothing, and then they uh, see Jesus on the shore. He beckons them ashore, um, and he has some food for them there over a charcoal fire, which for Peter particular is a reminder to him of uh, that charcoal fire where three times over he denied Jesus. Remember, he was asked three times, uh, you know Jesus? He said, no, I don't know the guy at all, three times over. And he felt dreadful afterwards when he realized that uh, he hadn't, uh, hadn't honored Jesus. And uh, having had that breakfast by the, um, the, the charcoal fire, we're going to read just a few verses uh, from John chapter 21 and um, verses 15 to 19 as the, the story goes on. Uh, when they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And then he said to him, follow me. Now, um, three times he's asked that question. You can understand why Peter was a little bit upset. You know, um, uh, why are you asking me three times over? The reason he's asked him three times over is because previously, uh, Peter three times over had denied Jesus. And in uh, a real sense, what's happening is Jesus giving him the opportunity to, to do what often we would, we would love to be able to do, just to, to replay uh, circumstance in our life and second time around to get it right. And, and that's what Jesus is doing with Peter. He's giving him the opportunity to, to get it right this time where previously he'd failed so miserably. And the, the question that he asks is a crucial question. Jesus asks him, uh, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And there's a sense in which that is ultimately the, the bottom line question that the, the whole of the Bible asks you and me as well. Do you love Jesus? Um, it's not so much do you believe in Jesus, that he is the Son of God, that he has uh, come down and has lived that life for us. Um, uh, yes, that's important, but the, the really basic question is, do you love Jesus? Not are you going to vote for him if, uh, if it comes to a vote? Are you going to give him the thumbs up or the thumbs down? Uh, not are you, you are persuaded he's a great teacher, but do you love him? It's a relational thing. And uh, there are just three very simple points that I want to highlight in connection with this. The first is that this is the primary question in the Bible, um, that love for Jesus is always the primary thing. Um, and you see that by the way in which that's always the question that Jesus asks Peter here, do you love me? Um, and, and you can be thinking as we, we ponder this, precisely that about yourself as, as Jesus asks you, the risen living Son of God, he says, do you love me? Um, how's your heart? Do you, do you delight in me? Do you love me? And uh, it is the primary question. You remember um, way back in the earlier part of the Bible, um, in, in one of the famous passages in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy chapter 6, um, the, the people of God were, were called upon by God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one God. There's only one God. And you are to love 
the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and so on. We had that song just before um, we, we started in um, this afternoon here. Um, do you love the Lord? Uh, because that's the bottom line command. That's the bottom line instruction, exhortation to love the Lord. Um, a long time ago, long before um, I was alive, long before any of you were alive, um, a, a famous bishop of Liverpool called J.C. Ryle, he once said this uh, about this. He said, of, of all the things that will surprise us on the resurrection morning, this, I believe, will surprise us most, that we did not love Christ more before we died. When we, when we finally see him, for who he is, when we finally come face to face with him, we, we will be astonished why we did not love him more uh, in our earthly life. When, uh, when the Lord has made known to us everything about him, uh, shown us how wise he is, how good he is, how kind he is, how strong he is, how surprising he is, how wonderful he is, in every single way, we will wonder, why did I not love him more? And uh, that's the primary thing, uh, we're to love the Lord. Second thing to notice here is that not only is it the primary question, it's also the, uh, a, a very personal question. See, three times over, uh, it is addressed very particularly to Simon. Uh, each occasion, it's not just do you love me, a kind of general, you know, everyone out there, do you love me, but Simon, you, do you love me? Three times over, on each occasion, Jesus specifies his name, Simon, son of John. I'm talking about you. Um, so don't look around, Peter. Don't think uh, maybe he's talking to someone else. Maybe he's putting someone else in the spot, but, but you. And he would use your name and say, so, so do you love me? Because this goes out to the whole world. I'm not to embarrass anyone by, by using your name, but um, that's what he says. Jerry, do you love me? Do you love me? Um, it is a very personal thing. You and him. Uh, you can't hide behind anyone else. You can't hide in the, the crowd and kind of think, yeah, you know, it's just it. as long as someone here kind of loves Jesus, that's okay. And I, I'm kind of with them. Uh, very personal. Uh, what is your relationship with Jesus? Because that is always the most important thing in life and in eternity that you, you are learning to love him. Uh, and if you find your heart is, is kind of cold and, and you struggle to, to love Jesus, ask him, help me to love you more. Help me to love you more day by day. That's the second thing. Uh, it's the primary question. It's a personal question. And thirdly, it is a very practical question as well. It's not just a kind of uh, sentimental uh, gush of, uh, of feeling that's being spoken about you. In each case, when Simon says, yes, you know, I, I, you know what, I love you, it's immediately followed by a practical exhortation saying, uh, so, so do this, says Jesus. I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to take care of my people. Um, and I want you to follow me. And, uh, and it is, therefore, always a very practical thing. Um, Augustine, uh, one of the, the kind of famous guys from way, way back in time, um, uh, he, he once said, love God and do what you like. Um, and, and you think, wow, that's, that's uh, just a carte blanche to, to kind of live as you like. And, uh, but the reason he was able to say that, because if you love God, you, you will do what he wants. You will, you will follow him. You will be keen to know what his will is, what his way is. And you'll be keen, therefore, simply to live your life doing what he wants, what he calls you to do. And, and that's what Peter is discovering here, that the, the love that he has for Jesus will find expression in a particular way. He will be giving himself to the care of the Lord Jesus' people. He will learn to love the church of Jesus Christ. He will learn to, to seek the, the glory of Jesus Christ. He will follow Jesus. He'll be sensitive to what Jesus is saying, how Jesus is using him. And uh, he will apply his life, his time, his energies to seeking uh, to help others know and love Jesus better themselves. And that'll be the same for you and me as well, that as we, we learn to love Jesus, uh, our, our first desire will simply be to, to help others come to know him as well, to see that he is for real and to see how good he is. So let me, let me round off just um, in prayer. And as we bow together in prayer, um, we'll just ask the Lord to, to help us to love him the more. He loves us. Um, 
far, far more than we could begin to comprehend. And, and he looks for the love of our hearts. Not complicated. Lord, um, it is... It is both uh, hugely comforting and exciting on the one hand, and yet also hugely challenging on the other to have that question directed to us, that that's what you're looking for. You're not looking for our service. You're not looking for our vote. You're not looking for our uh, performance. You're looking for the love of our hearts because you love us. You set your love upon your people. And so we'd, we'd want to ask Jesus, please, by whatever means you see fit to use, would you help us to love you more? Would you stir within our hearts that longing for yourself? Would you open our eyes to see more and more the beauty that is yours? Would you kindle in our hearts that awareness of your presence, that thrill at all that you are and all that you do, and enable us to live our lives in the consciousness of your presence and in pursuit of your glory. Help us to that end, please, Lord Jesus, as we launch ourselves all over afresh into the rest of today, into the rest of the week. Uh, go with us, be our help and our strength, and use us for your glory. For your own name's sake, we ask it. Amen. Well, there you have it. Uh, good to see you, and I'm glad that we're able to provide a little bit of nourishment for you as well. And may you go in God's strength for the rest of today and the rest of the week and the rest of your life. Love the Lord your God with all your heart.